Hi, Spitler families. Tonight I'm going to be reading the book A North Country Night 2 by Daniel Sansausi. And I'm coming to you from the shores of Lake Superior. And it's a very North Country night here. It's a little bit of snow coming down. It's a beautiful night. And when we're done reading this story, I'm going to take you for a walk along the shoreline. And we're going to hunt for euperlites, which are rocks that glow in the dark. During the story, I'd like you to pay attention to the animals that they mention and the different ways that the animals survive and what they use to survive. And when we're done, if you could answer that question on the Google form so you can win a free book. So I hope you enjoy the story. Snow is falling and it's nighttime in the North Country. One by one, the lights go off in the cedar-sided cabin that overlooks a deep blue lake. Now it is time for the forest to come alive with the creatures of the night. Under the winter moon, the great horned owl glides over the roof of the cabin and circles above the tops of the giant pine trees. He is searching for prey with his keen yellow eyes. Soon the owl locates movement in the cool shadows below the trees. A gray coyote lopes effortlessly through the fresh snow. Although the owl is a fierce predator, he will not disturb the coyote. At the edge of the timber, the coyote finds the tracks of a red fox. The coyote knows it would not be easy to catch the clever fox, but instinct tells him that the fox may have picked up the scent of food. So he decides to follow the trail. The little fox is not looking for food though. He is seeking out a woodchuck's burrow to take over for the bitter days ahead. The coyote is not the only creature that the fox must be aware of. Silhouetted in the moonlight, a great tawny mountain lion is dangerously close, but the powerful cat is preoccupied with the tracks of another animal that he is stalking. The fox is safe for now. The mountain lion continues stalking his prey through the dense woodland. Once the cat is at a safe distance, a porcupine lumbers into the clearing and up to a fallen tree. With quills loosely attached to his skin, the small mammal will claim the hollow arch in the tree as his den. After removing the last bit of snow from the entrance to his den, the porcupine crawls inside. He will stay there until the snow stops falling. Not far away, a cottontail rabbit sits under a cedar tree, munching on twigs and leaves that have not been covered by the snow. Food is scarce and the rabbit has made a lucky find. Once the cottontail has had his fill of food, he hops along the timberline on his way to the stream. As he starts down the embankment to the water, he senses danger and stands frozen. Suddenly, he turns and backtracks into the woodland. At the north fork of the black stream, a hungry bobcat has located a rodent under a fallen bough. Busy beavers have built a dam at the south fork of the stream. In the midst of the artificial pool that has been created, a lone beaver has picked up the scent of the bobcat. Hurriedly, he swims up to a lodge built of twigs and logs. In this lodge, he will be safe from the sleek cat. Downstream from the beaver lodge, a long-tailed weasel in his white winter coat has also picked up the bobcat scent. The frisky little weasel, knowing that he will not fare well against the cat, paddles across the stream. He is headed for a familiar bushy area where he can easily escape from the predators. Just around the bend from the brush where the long-tailed weasel has taken refuge, a curious raccoon shuffles out from behind a bush. This furry scavenger with a bandit's face makes its way down to the stream where he will feed at the water's edge. The raccoon soon discovers the large rainbow trout that is washed ashore. After filling himself with a tasty fish, he continues on his journey. Across the water, near the mouth of the lake, a wet furred river otter slides down an icy bank into the swift current. While the playful otter takes another run into the current, a mule deer trots down the embankment to the lake's rim. The graceful deer bends her slender neck and takes a drink of the cold water. The mule deer turns away from the lake and makes her way toward a grove of pine trees. As dawn approaches, a soft light touches the tops of the lofty pines, and high above, in one of the trees, a great horned owl will soon be asleep. Across the lake and further up the shore, the lights go on in the snow-covered cabin. In a few hours, the sun will rise and chimney smoke from the breakfast hearth will signal the end of another North Country night.
So here I am down at the shores of Lake Superior. It's kind of a wavy night. But you can see all the rocks and driftwood. So I'm going to start looking in these rocks over here with the black light that I have. Oh, there's one. Kate's going to pick them up for me. And I'm just going to keep walking down the beach until I see something that glows. Ooh, there's wow, a good one. Wow, that really bright. So that one you can wow. really see. That one really That's glows. really a good one. Wow. Okay, it's going to hold it in her hand. You can see how it kind of so I'll get it far away a little bit. See how it sparkles. Have a great North Country night. We're off to go hunt for more eucalypts. Bye. Bye.